Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Hey, and I'm Sasha Burson. And today we decided not to answer any particular question, but just talk through the whole subject of marketing for law firms and to describe and discuss in general how legal firms can um, bring in more traffic, how they can bring in more cases, um, just a complete marketing guide. I think this, this will be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So we talk to a lot of attorneys and there is quite a bit of misunderstanding of what works and what doesn't work. So a lot of attorneys waste money on marketing for a number of reasons and then they get discouraged, but they understand that some of their competitors do it very well. So there is no clear understanding of what works and what doesn't work. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. And before we talk about what works and what doesn't work, let's start off by saying who this video is really for, right? Whether you are a solo attorney who is all about do it yourself, or you're looking to hire a new firm, marketing firm, or you are questioning whether your marketing firm does what it's supposed to do. This video is for you. We will share facts of what works and what doesn't work. So you're much more confident marketer or much more mar confident employer for marketing agencies, because if you do not understand what it is that they need to do, you will probably not be able to question whether what they're doing for you is right or wrong. And you will spend the money just understanding that things could be better or knowing that things are really not working, but you're spending money because you're under contract. A lot of marketing, marketing firms have annual contracts in place and you may be bound by that contract and you may be spending money and not seeing the results that you expected and hoped for. So we want to make sure that that BS is removed from your business. So this is the big idea for this post. And why should people listen to you, to me, to us? So we've been doing this for a long, long, long time. And we work with a number of companies, firms, large and small. So we've become quite expertly since our company was founded almost 11 years ago. I think it will be in April that we'll be celebrating April 11th that we'll be celebrating our 11th anniversary. So we know what we're doing. And once again, this is not a pitch video. This is just a guide for you where in the next 15, 20 minutes, we'll go through a lot of things. So before we talk about a lot of things, I think here's why it's really important to understand this. When you look at income disparity between attorneys and law firms, it is enormous. I've mentioned it before and I'm going to be like, beating this dead horse just to make sure that everyone understands how huge that disparity is. Bureau of Labor Statistics last year, 2017, we're now at the end of 2018 as we're recording this, have posted data that median income for attorneys in the United States, regardless of their experience, is a hairline under $120,000 a year. Top 3% earners make $500,000 or more to infinity per year. What's the difference between these attorneys? It's usually not the amount of experience. It's usually not that they work four times harder or longer or that they're four times smarter. It's just the attorneys that make a lot more money, like four times more than others. They know how to get business or they have marketing companies that help them get that business systematically. And it's really important to understand that there is a system in place. And if you're going at it alone, or you have a really shitty marketing company doing this for you, you have a weaker system going against the stronger system and the stronger system is always going to win. So what is the formula for success for marketing for law firms? Well, at the end of the day, the result that you're really aiming for is obviously a steady stream of new clients. So your caseload could be full at any given day. And if you want to grow your law firm or you're in the process of growing your law firm, obviously you want to get as many cases as you need to accomplish your business objectives. And that means that you want to spread those cases around to your associate attorneys so they can help you build up your business. So going back to that formula, right? Number one aspect in that formula is findability. 
can your prospective clients find you where they look? And I'm going to talk about this in detail, like where they typically look in a little bit. Let's, let's uh, finish talking about the formula. So findability is one. Number two is high performance website. I'm going to explain what high performance website really means, but if it's not a high performance website, chances are that your marketing efforts will underperform and under deliver and you will have a much lower ROI or end up wasting money than if you had a high performance website. Third factor, and this one is on you, how helpful you are to your prospective clients before they become your paying customers. And this is something that we cannot control, but we can give you some pointers. If for example, you only get one out of six people that you talk to as a client or one out of 10 people that you talk to as a client, because many of our high performance attorney clients, they get like one out of three or maybe one out of four. This is where you want to be. And, and finally, and this is something not to be neglected, whether your marketing performs exceptionally well or exceptionally poorly, you got to make sure that you track and fine tune on an ongoing basis, because if you do not, your competitors can hit you like a ton of bricks and your results will start sliding very fast without your being aware of what is happening. Because if your marketing does well right now, there is a lagging factor where you will actually start seeing decline. And by the time you may be hitting rock bottom or, or sliding toward that rock bottom, it may be a bit late to start fixing things. That's why you track on a monthly basis and wherever there is opportunity to improve. And the greatest room in the world is the room for improvement. So you got to make sure that those improvements do take place whenever applicable, which is like all the time. All right. So let's talk about the number one factor, which is findability. Findability, once again, means that prospective clients can find you wherever they look. And where do they typically look? If you are a B2C type of attorney, if you practice bankruptcy law, family law, criminal defense law, elder law, etc., they look for you on Google. More so than referrals today in 2018, they look for you on Google than ever before. They also look for answers to their questions on YouTube. This is the second largest platform. And then they look for you in directories when they already know that they need a certain type of attorney specializing in solving their problems. So they will look in directories as well. Those are, in, there's also social media, but to a smaller extent, those are the primary platforms where consumers look today to find attorneys. So where you need to be, obviously, number one space is Google. And here, you, it may sound like I'm beating the dead horse. However, you have to understand one very important factor. Google page one is a very limited space. And when you look at that limited space, there are typically up to 12 law firms there. There are three firms, sometimes four, that are advertising up top, three firms that are in local map listings, and a few firms in the organic listings below the map. Now, if you are in Chicago, Detroit, New York, San Francisco, Oregon, Miami, any major metropolitan area, I bet you $1,000 you have hundreds of competitors. Yet there are only like 12, 12 firms that are in that space trying to get the attention of prospective clients. So this is something that I always have had very high time, hard time wrapping my mind around because everyone's got to eat. Everyone's got to get that business. And it is relatively simple today to get that business. You just have to show up where people show up looking for you. And like 90 some percent of firms fail to do that. And it is not because they do exceptionally well. Once again, median income is 119 around the country. And I know that is probably not the pinnacle that you were dreaming of when you went to law. For. Well, I mean, it depends. Maybe you went for law, to law school like 30 years ago, and back then 118 would have been the pinnacle of professional career. But today in 2018, it's okay. It's not terrible by any stretch of imagination. And you may be very happy with that 119, but for most of us, living in major metropolitan areas with very high cost of living, 119 is by far no longer a pinnacle. So you have to be where they look. Now, how does Google decide whether you're going to show up in those organic listings below the map or in the map or not? It is complex matter so that complex. I am going to... Huh? So complex. So complex that I'm going to try to break down and make it really simple. It is 
how much authority Google sees in you. Let me explain. So people who have high authority and high visibility usually are the ones that get a lot more business, right? People who publish books, people who do speaking tours, etc. They're highly visible. So other things that they have authority doesn't mean that they're really good at what they do. It just means that they're highly visible. So we give them authority. We pro they project authority. Google works the same way. If your website has a lot of authority, you will rank high. If your website has less authority than your competitors' websites, Google is going to rank you low. And if you're not in the top five organic search results, you're missing out. And if you're on page two of Google, you're invisible to vast majority of the market. When I say vast majority of the market, I think last time we checked studies, it was like 97% of all Google users like never go to page two because why? Google gives you good results on page one. We're all lazy. We all want to get to information as fast as possible and move on to our daily lives, whatever it is that we're doing. We do not use the Google page two anymore. So you have to be on page one, preferably in the top five and super preferably in top three because top three get 55% of all clicks that happen on page one. So what makes your website more authoritative than others is number one factor is how much time people who do come to your website actually spend on those pages. Why you may ask? Because the more time they spend on your pages, the more relevant Google believes that information is to them. So if I'm searching for a personal injury attorney near me and I go to a website and it has a lot of relevant information to me, I may spend three, four minutes on it before I reach out to that attorney, maybe longer. Now, if I do that search and end up on a website that I don't like how it looks, information is not properly structured, it's or difficult no for me to understand, or no information, or it leads me to the homepage and I don't understand whether you practice personal injury or you practice personal injury, family law, commercial litigation, uh, elder law, traffic court, whatever, right? Then I'm like, eh, it's no expert, so I'm going to bounce out of there after a few seconds. So one factor is that Google really wants to make sure, or not make sure, it's looking for the dwell time, how much time people spend on your website. The more, the better, the more authority Google will give you. Number two factor is how many other websites are pointing to your website. What that means is the more websites are pointing to your websites and saying that there is relevant information. I'm going to use a personal injury attorney example. So let's imagine that you have 10 websites that are pointing to your website and they say personal injury attorney can be found on this website. That's good unless you have competitors who have 500 websites that are linking up to their website saying that personal injury attorney can be found there. So it is an interesting scheme where Google wants to see and decides on your authority by looking at how many others think that you have authority. How the many other high, highly authoritative websites? Correct. Like not just junk websites. No, not, not just junk websites. websites, of course. So, so every website has what's called domain authority, right? Or DA and, and page authority. I'm not going to go into like great technical detail, but the more authority the websites have that are pointing to your website, the more credibility they give your website. With that credibility, you have higher authority. And the higher authority, the more Google thinks of you when someone is searching for personal injury attorney. Once again, it's just an example. Yes, basically those websites just pass in this authority, ju the juice of authority to your website as well. Correct. Correct. So, this is super imperative. Those, those two factors are just super imperative. How much dwell time people spend on typically on your website and how many other high authority websites are pointing to your website. Now, another factor that Google really looks for is how much content, high authority content you have on your website. And it's correlated to the amount of time that people spend on your website. If you have great videos, people are going to spend more time on your website watching those videos. If you have great written content, information that is highly relevant to them, they're going to spend more time on your website. So all of that is adding up to the dwell time. So content marketing matters a lot because that content draws people in and keeps them on your website longer. Now, content marketing is not limited to the things that you do on your website because there is such a concept as content distribution. And what that means is that when you publish content, you can distribute it 
to other platforms. The more platforms you have content distributed to, the more of them are pointing to your website. Once again, those backlinks going from other websites. And the more of those backlinks, as I mentioned before, the more authority your content has given, the more people are going to end up coming to your website. And that's one of your primary goals is to get the right people to your website, stay on your website consuming that content, and ultimately converting. And when I talk about converting, they pick up the phone or they fill out your contact us form. So they start that engagement process with you. That's super important. You have, to, you have to really wrap your mind around that. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a system against system. We do not expect any solo attorney or even a small, small law firm, like a couple of partners, to be able to dedicate enough time to this to make sure that they get great results. That's why, and I'm not pitching like our company, but you have to find a professional, proficient marketing agency that can explain how they're going to help you get whatever results that you want because your competitors are certainly doing that. So, next. What also drives traffic to your website and ends up with engagements, the initial conversations that people have with you, are directories. And when I talk about directories, Google in its own is a directory. So when someone looks for personal injury attorney near me, you're going to pop up in their directory. It will show local listings that are nearby them and suggest those attorneys. Those that have more reviews get a little more pop. So you gotta make sure that you have reviews and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, other than Google as a directory, there are other directories. Those are Yelp, and that's the general directory. This is where people look for reviews. And then there are industry-specific directories like Avo, Super Lawyers, Fine Law, etc. all of those directories. You have to claim your listings everywhere. Those listings for high, on high authority websites like Yelp, Avo, etc. they're also pointing to your website, giving it more credibility. So, the more high authority websites are listing your website and pointing to you under the right search terms, like personal injury attorney once again, the more credibility and authority your website is going to get. Next, and this is a controversial thing, social media. Should you do social media or not? Some people, especially the ones that sell social media marketing for attorneys, will pitch it like it's the hottest thing since the sliced bread. It's not for most attorneys. And the reason for that is when you think about Google versus Facebook, Google is where you do the selling. And I know most of you hate the word selling, but it's the truth. This is where people look for vendors to buy things from or services from. And Facebook, this is where you do branding. And branding just means I exist, I do this. I exist, I do this. Doesn't mean that people look there. I mean, there's like a small percentage that probably look there for vendors, but it's a really small percentage. And maybe in comparison that's not the Google. first step, right? It's never the first step, right? So you can do a lot of branding on Facebook and get close to zero. Never zero, but get close to zero impact. Now, here's the impact that you do get. Google, when it determines how high of authority to give your website, also looks at social media postings. It wants to see that you are active on platforms like Facebook. So it would behoove you to have some presence on Facebook. And when it comes to being on Facebook, what you really have to keep in mind is this. This is the place to be human. Not a lawyer per se, but just human. This is where you can post things about your firm, and about the great people that work there, and about accomplishments of the firm. And just like you would do on YouTube, and I'll switch to that in a moment, Facebook can be used to post helpful videos. And incredibly importantly, Facebook is used to gather reviews, just like Google, just like Yelp, just like legal, like industry specific directories. You want to get those reviews across every directory because aside from reading your website and consuming your con video content, people really want to make sure that you don't just say you know what you're doing, you can prove it. And proof is usually in the pudding, and that pudding today are the reviews. Like, think about it. Back in the day, if you needed an attorney, you open Yellow Pages or you call on a family member and ask, like, have you hired an attorney like this? Or if you knew that they already did, like, you'd ask them, well, did you like the guy or the gal who helped you with this or that issue? Today, that is way less effective than going to Google or Yelp or, or a legal specific directories because there, it's not opinion on one person. It's opinions of dozens and sometimes hundreds of people that actually give you like 
feedback and on whether I like them or not. There's been an interesting study done that people trust those reviews from people they've never heard about as much as they trust a recommendation from a friend. Yeah, because a friend is already biased, right? They spend the money with the lawyer and unless that lawyer like really screwed them, right? Which is not the case most of the time, right? What are they going to say? No, like don't hire him? No, right? Like they have to confirm that they made the right decision mm -hmm. by choosing that attorney. Now, now the reviews online, most of the time they're like super unbiased because there is nothing to gain, right? Mm -hmm. So people either write reviews when they're extremely happy or extremely pissed off, right? right? So, yeah, by the way, it's okay if you get some pissed off reviews. Everyone understands that if you've been in right. business for more than a day, there will be people who will be incredibly happy and then there will be people who will be incredibly unhappy and you can't help it, right? Like it's actually any a little business. bit fishy if you have 105 star reviews. Yes, because... It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's questionable, right? Like, is. like, is this true or not? So, reviews, super important. So you have to manage your reputation online. And we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Now, let's switch to website. Specifically, I want to talk about high performance websites, like what makes a website a high performance website versus everything else. There are really just few factors that convince your prospective client whether you're it or not, right? Unfortunately, or fortunately, all humans judge the book by its cover. So there is that visceral reaction that takes place the instant someone gets to your website. And the way that your website and you will be judged by its cover is in comparison to other websites they have visited. You might be the most brilliant attorney in the world, but if your website looks like it was made in 1997 and all of your competitors that are listed on that same Google page one, search results page, guess, how much credibility they're going to give you in comparison to your competitors. Like close to none. You have to look right. Just the same way as if attorney shows up to a meeting in a beat up car or a really wrinkled suit or with a really beat up portfolio that looks like they got it in 1972 or any other factor that make you look unprofessional, neglected, not caring about your appearance, that will be like a major strike against you. So looking good, and when I say looking good, again, it's in comparison to your competitors is a must to make sure that you make the right first impression. Second thing is people always look for the answer to the question, can they really help me? And the way that you answer that question is by saying, I do this, and here are case results if your state bar association allows you to post such content. I know some state bars are like really, really restrictive about what it is that you can publish and what it is that you cannot publish. So that said, those are the things that people look for. Can they help me? And can they actually prove what it is, what it is that they're saying? And that proof is once again in case studies and reviews. Now. There is one error that a lot of marketing companies and a lot of do-it-yourself marketers slash attorneys make. And that is they promote their firm and every click goes to the homepage. And they have like four practice areas. Now, there is such a study and it's not just relevant to all things digital, all things internet, but it's all around us and that field of study is called user experience. And user experience matters a ton. In fact, it matters so much that the most well-known manual or a book published on the matter of user experience is called Don't Make Me Think. The reason why I'm bringing that up is that if you do practice in three, four different areas, and you drive all of your traffic to the home page, now you're forcing that person who is visiting your website to think of whether you do what it is that they need you to do. And now they have to look for that information. And the more the cumbersome process in comparison to your competitors whose websites they're also going to visit, like invariably. No one goes to one website and says, this attorney is for me. Like that doesn't happen. They're going to visit 
two, three, four, five, maybe 10 other attorneys' websites. You have to deliver great user experience to continue convincing them that you're definitely for them. So UX, user experience, is like incredibly important. It also contributes to building trust. Like the easier it is to interact with your website, the more confident people feel intuitively, right? They don't speak about it out loud, but intuitively we feel like this is the firm that I want to talk to. These are the attorneys that I want to, or the attorney that I want to talk to. So it's all like building little credibility. The next factor that most people are not aware of that really contributes to high performance of your website or lack of it is the upload speed of the website. Well, let me explain. If your website takes a while to upload, like someone is searching on mobile device or on their laptop or desktop or tablet, if it takes more than three seconds, number one, Google assesses a penalty against your website. So you might be doing everything else right, but your website is slow and Google is going to say, eh, this website is worse than its competitor, so we're going to kick it down a notch. I know it sounds crazy, what does speed have to do with how authoritative your website is, but Google knows that a lot of people will simply not continue waiting for your website to upload. They'll abandon it in favor of another one because that slow load speed contributes to poor user experience. So you gotta deliver like great user experience across every device. And this is an important point. There are still plenty of attorneys with websites that were built in 2013 or prior to that. And one thing that we know about the vast majority of websites that were built 2013 or before that, they're not optimized for mobile search. Well, guess what? For majority, not majority, but close to like 50% of all searches today, those searches for attorneys take place on like really small devices. It has to be optimized for mobile search. No, it's more than 50%. It's more than 50% now? Okay, so my, my knowledge is a little bit, uh, I've fallen behind. So. Your website has to be optimized for mobile. So I do not have to like squint, try to read the content on your website, or I have to do this and then like move your website back and forth so I can read what it says because this will guarantee abandonment and that abandonment will signal to Google that your website is not worthy of being on page one because most of your competitors, if not all of your competitors already have mobile optimized websites. So this is like a huge, simple thing that can make it or break it. Now, um, we talked about getting reviews and one important aspect that I wanted to add to that is that when you get reviews, some of them are positive, some of them are negative. Whenever there is a negative review, you have to know about it like same day. And there are software that your marketing company can set you up with that will notify you every time there is a review. You will get an, like, an email that says, hey, this person left a review on Yelp or And with Google, or, if you claim your listing, you yes. are gonna get those notifications. Notifications, absolutely, yes. right. Yes. Not with other platforms, no. so you actually have to set up like special software, and this is what we do and other marketing agencies do. So, for every negative review, do not wait, respond to it. Thank the person who left the review because any negative review is an opportunity to learn and to improve. And then, depending on what they wrote, ask them to communicate with you to resolve the issue or offer your help to resolve the issue. Or if it is a BS review, counteract it and explain why it's a BS review. And once again, invite the person to reach out to you to resolve the issue. This is really important because as years go by, you will have more and more negative reviews and people are intuitively drawn more to negative reviews than they are to positive reviews because it is easier to disqualify you than to qualify you because qualifying you presents danger because now I have to spend money. And disqualifying you assures that I do not make the mistake of hiring you, right? So it's really important to address every negative review that you get. I, I think I'm drawn to the end of this, but a couple more points that are like really important. After your marketing company does good work and draws in all the right people, so they call you and message you via your website, it is your job to talk to them and help them decide whether they are a good fit for you and whether you're a good fit for them. And a lot of attorneys fail to do it very well. I highly recommend that if you do not convert at least 
one out of four people that calls you or that messages you through the website is to seek appropriate training how to become better at helping people on the phone. So your closing ratio, right, it's a business term that we use here, actually improve, improves because if you go from one to five to one to four, number one, your cost of getting each client goes down substantially. And number two is with in an increase from five to four, right, from one out of five to one out of four, your business will automatically grow by 20%. It's like as simple as that. This is not what we do, but there are plenty of companies that do training for attorneys and make them more likable on the phone or help them become more likable on the phone so they actually end up getting more business. Second to last point, with all marketing that you do, tracking results and fine tuning them is not optional. It is mandatory. Like you have to know what happens on a monthly basis, whether you do it yourself or you have a really good marketing firm that does it for you. And the reason for that is it's very easy to miss something. And for your trend, instead of going up, you're getting more and more business to start sloping downward. Never let your marketing firm coast. Always ask them tough questions. Always look at the most important data in their reports and which is the amount of traffic that you get, amount of contacts that you get, and what those contacts are, and quality of those contacts. Are they BS leads, or are these real people who are really looking for your services? And compare the results month after month after month, and then year over year, doing overlap of year over year data, just to make sure that things are moving in the right direction. If you do this, you will always stay ahead of any negative trends and will be able to push your marketing firm to reverse that marketing that uh, negative trend before it really starts hitting your bottom line. So, and one last thing, I beg you to hire a marketing firm to do this for you. And the reason for that is, it is a dog eat dog, attorney eat attorney world out there. The people, the lawyers that hire the best marketing firms will invariably win. They will beat you in this game and get more clients. So the best talent that you can afford in the form of marketing law firm, the best outcome and ROI, return on investment you're going to get. Never, ever, ever think about hiring a firm that promises you to deliver clients for 500 bucks a month. It is like me hiring a, what's a good example? Elder law attorney who claims that they will deliver results for 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or criminal defense attorney that will say, I, I, I can clear this up for you for hundred bucks or whatever maybe. Like if it doesn't sound reasonable, it's probably too good to be true. It's so easy to buy into the mantra that, like, I don't understand marketing and I think that 500 bucks is enough. They should be able to drive traffic to my website. I should be able to get business. And once again, the, the, the real fallacy in that is that many a times you have to sign an annual contract. So on the front end, you're spending peanuts. On the back end, you have opportunity costs that could be hundreds of thousands, or if you're a larger firm, millions of dollars. Just, just wrap your mind around that. A shitty marketing company will underperform, not with the money that you're giving them, but with the opportunity cost that they will create. And that opportunity cost can be incredibly high. So a shitty marketing company that will give you like, or help you get like one client a month versus a really good one that will help you get 10 new clients per month. The difference is not in how much money you spend with them, it's how much money you're losing with the shitty one that charges 500 or 700 or $1,000 a month. And that's like the real crux of it all. Like you really have to understand what it is that the firm is going to do for you, how they're, what objectives they're going to help you accomplish, how they're going to go about it. Make sure that you're tracking it with them or reviewing the results on a monthly basis. And if it sounds too good to be true, like it is. I think we've covered a lot. Did I miss anything? Well, I think, um, how about you tell us if there are any questions that you have commented uh, in the video yeah. and then we'll happy to address yeah. that. Yeah, and if you're watching this on our website, comment below 
So and uh, we'll, we'll keep on improving and bringing more uh, insightful information that will hopefully, and this is our true aim, is we want to help you grow your business. So you do not have a job, but you have a business. And when we think about business, right, it's, it, it's not a well-paying job and it's not where it's you and a partner and a paralegal. That's not a business. A business where it's you, the owner, maybe a couple of partners, and a few associates that are bringing cash into the business. So one day, there is enough cash coming in, there is enough profit where you can decide, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go into another business because I made this law firm successful and now it's a cash cow and I don't have to be here. By the way, hire someone who is trustworthy, who is going to keep a very watchful eye on what the marketing company continues doing for you. Because once you step out of the picture, if should you choose to do this, the person who is going to replace you, if they do not keep a very watchful eye on marketing results, sure enough, that cash stream that you're getting from your law firm will start doing this because no one's keeping track of marketing. Is that a wrap? It is. Hey, thanks for watching. Post thanks. your questions below.